chapter 22, part two. Uh, so let's talk about magnetic force on a wire carrying a current. So if, if we have a wire, let's say that this is our wire carrying a current I, and it is located inside a magnetic field, okay, external magnetic field of B uniform. As you can see, B is in this direction. And B and I, or B and this length of the wire is making an angle of theta, okay, then there will be exerted a force on this wire. Because if you consider a I, or if you consider all of these electrons, all of these charged particles, okay, moving inside the wire, you're technically having a millions of these electrons moving in one direction. Okay, so all, we know that there exists a force acting on a single particle. If it's, a, if it's inside a B field or if it's inside a magnetic field. How do we know that? We, have, uh, we know what the force is, right? We know that there exists a force acting on a particle if it is moving inside a B field, okay? The value for that, if you remember, is Q V cross B, right? Or Q V B sine theta. We, don't, we, we talked about it in part one of, uh, of this chapter. Now, consider having millions of these particles moving. In other words, you have an, a current I. And so this, this essentially means that there exists a, a force acting on this wire or acting on this uh, millions of these particles moving all together. So if I have QVB sine alpha, or in other words, if I have F Q V cross B, okay, for one particle, for one electron, okay, and I want to have this for all of them, or you want, in other words, I want to have it for the wire, then um, because these electrons are moving, so the charge is moving, so there is a delta Q over delta T, okay, because this, this Q is a rate, this Q will change. Okay, so this Q is, uh, is changing by time, all right? So that's why I have a delta Q over delta T because uh, the number of charges are changing. There is a current inside this wire. And then, so uh, if I have uh, another delta T here, in other words, what I'm doing here is this. I have divide this by delta T and multiply it by delta t. So this delta t and this delta t can cancel out, but I, I put it here for a reason, okay? So what I have is that delta q over delta t, which we know it from previous chapter is I or the current, and then V delta t, which we know from physics one, which is L. So I have F equals I L B sine theta, I L B sine theta. If I wanted to write it in a correct way of um, cross product, then F is I L cross B, okay? So this would be the correct way of uh, putting this equation together. A force acting on a wire carrying a current I inside a B field or a magnetic field, the force is this okay this would be this would be the force it is perpendicular it is in the angle of 90 degrees with b and 90 degrees with uh this wire so these are all 90 degrees okay so if you have a loop with a current i in other words you have a i entering a loop, okay? So this would be the direction. And it is going out, this current is going 
out from the same point that it was entering. In other words, you have a loop of current here, okay? Then there exists a force in this loop. So the, the, the two forces, one is in this side one, and the other was, and the other one is in this side two, okay? And by the way, uh, let me give you the right-hand rule for, uh, for the direction of the force and how you have to do it. So your four fingers will be along the direction of the uh, current, whatever the direction of the current is, you put your four finger across that along, along the, uh, that direction, okay? In the direction of the current. Then B field is coming right out of, that, out of your hand. B field is coming right out of uh, your palm, okay? And then your thumb will show you the direction of the force. So, one more time. Your, uh, for example, for here, if this is my four fingers, this is the, in the direction of the eye, and then B field is coming out, then my thumb is showing the direction of F. Okay? So here, what I have on part on, on this part of the loop, on part one of the loop. So put your four fingers along the direction of the current, okay? And B field should come out of your hand. P field should come out of your palm. And then your thumb should, should show the direction of the force. So if you do that, then you know that this is the direction of the current. This is the direction of the B field. Okay. So there should be, there should exist a force F in this direction. If you do the same thing for wire two, then there should exist a force in this direction. Okay. So in other words, if you're looking from top, uh, and this is wire one, part one, it's coming out of the page. And for, uh, if you're looking from top, then part two, the, the, the current is going inside the page. So this would be the force on part one of the wire on side one, and this would be the force on side two of the wire, okay? In other words, this loop will start to rotate. So there will be a rotation once you put this loop of current inside a uniform magnetic field, okay? Because, uh, because as you can see, there, is a, there exists a force in this, inside one, and there exists an opposite force in the opposite direction, same amount in the opposite direction, and then this will cause to have a type of rotation once you put this loop inside a magnetic field. So if you do that, then we have a torque. So there exists a torque on a current carrying loop. So uh, recall what the torque was. Torque was R cross F, okay? Uh, a force acting on the distance R will create a torque, okay? These all are vectors. So in other words, if I were to write torque, it's R F sine of let's say alpha or theta or phi, let's call it phi. So here, when you're looking at this, we have R, which in our case is W over two. We call it W. So this R is W over two, okay? And F is just a force uh, on a piece of wire carrying current I, which we already have it. I L B sine theta. So force is I, L, B, sine theta. And then you have sine of phi here, okay? This theta is the, uh, this uh, sine of theta is the angle between L and B, okay? This is coming from the force. So in other words, if I wanna show it maybe a little bit better, this is the force, okay? And then this is 
r, and then this is psi, sine of phi, and the phi is the angle between r and f, okay? So, with all of that being said, um, in, in this case, the angle between the L and the B is always 90, and sine of 90 is always 1. So we know that this guy is always 1. So torque is W over 2 I L B sine of phi. And how many, how many wires do we have? We had one over here and one over here. So whatever force that it's been exerted on this loop, you have to multiply it by two because you have two sides. Okay. So what you're ending up having is this. This two and this two will cancel out. You have W, I, L, B, sine phi. Okay. That's what you have. Now, when you're looking at this, L times W, L is this length. So this is L. And uh, this is W, okay? If you multiply that, then you have the area. So L times W is the area, okay, or A. So rather than having W times L, I can just write that, uh, write A. If, if you do that, then you will have tau being, or torque being NIAB sine phi. And this N is, you might have more than one loop, right? You might have like 10 loops. So the number of turns uh, of wire increase torque. If you have like 10 loops, then you have 10 of these. So the, the, num the torque will increase. So what you have here is that NIA B sine phi. Psi, uh, phi is the direction between uh, the, uh, that, that would be this, okay? This is phi. The direction between the force and this wire, or the direction of the magnetic field with respect to the um, perpendicular line through the center of, um, of this loop. And then B is the magnetic field, A is the area of the loop, I is the current inside one of these, and then N is the number of turns or the number of loops. So, electric current magnetic field in Ampere's law. So uh, if I have just one wire, okay, if I have a wire, current current I, because of these electrons are moving, okay, these electrons are moving inside this wire, they produce a electric field around it. So there is, sorry, a magnetic field around it. So there exists a magnetic field Okay, around this wire carrying current I. And if I put a compass around this wire, I can see that the needle of these compass will go towards the direction of the magnetic field, okay? If you put some little particles or little irons or make magnets, powders around this wire, you can see that they, they will form in the direction of this magnetic field, which is B right here, okay? And these are circular lines. So there exists a circular uh, type of relation uh, when it comes to finding the B. If you go further away from this wire, the B field should get weaker. If you get closer to the wire, your B field should increase, okay, or should get stronger. So right-hand rule, how to find the direction of that. Your thumb should be, this by the way, we have so many right-hand rules, so you have to be careful which one to use when, um, you know, um, it depends on the situation. So the right-hand rule, finding the direction of the magnetic field uh, for the current carrying current I. Uh, your thumb should be in the direction of the wire or it should be in the direction of the uh, current. So if, if the current is top or towards the top of the page, uh, then uh, your thumb should be in that direction. If it's going down, then your thumb should, should should be down and then you're cur curling your four fingers whichever direction that you're curling or curving your four fingers then that would be the direction of the b field okay so in this case 
this should be, be in the direction of a B field, as you can see, because that's the point that you're curling your four fingers. Okay. Uh, magnetic field on a wire, the magnetic field is inversely proportional to the distance. As we know, if you go away from a wire, okay, this is current I. If you know, if you're going away from uh, the wire, let's say, okay. Let's say that. So this would be, oh. All right, I hope I got it. There we go. So this would be your R, and then this would be the direction of the B. Uh, so, because if you put your thumb along the direction of the I, then you're curling your four fingers then that would be the direction of a B field. And it depends on how far you are away from the, the wire. Okay, so it depends on the R. If you're going really far away from it, then your B field should decrease, should get weaker and weaker. But if you're getting really close to the wire, you're having a stronger magnetic field. It also depends on the, uh, the amount of current inside. So I will rail, later on show you that specifically for each point, for each R, this is the B field. I'll use Ampere law to show you that B is mu zero I over two pi R. And this mu zero is the permeability of the free space. I'm just gonna call it mu zero. Just remember it's permeability of the free space. It is four pi times 10 to the negative seven. Tesla times meters over A or over Ampere. So um, for a current carrying current I, uh, a distance r from it, the magnetic field is mu zero i over two pi r. So now if you have two, two um, currents, two wires, okay, let's, let's consider case one and case two. Uh, if I can write it down. Case two, here we go. Um, so case one is that we have two wires and uh, the current is going in the opposite direction. So in wire one, it's going this direction, wire two, it's going in the opposite direction. Case two, they both go in the same directions, okay? So if you consider then that, then this wire one, for example, okay, it is presented it is located in the, elect in the magnetic field produced by wire two. So this wire two is producing a uh, magnetic field. How do we know it produces a magnetic field? I just showed that it exists. There exists a magnetic field because of the current and that is the amount of that magnetic field, okay? So this wire two is producing a magnetic field, okay? And uh, wire one is located inside that. Um, with the same analogy, with the same concept, wire two is inside a magnetic field that wire one is producing. So let's, let's consider that. Uh, wire one has a current in this direction. So your thumb, along, your thumb should be in a direction of the wire in the direction of the current. So this is your thumb, okay? And then your four fingers, you're, they're, they're curling and that would show you the direction of the B field. So this would be your four fingers. So this should be the B field, okay? Specifically at the location of wire two, the B field is up, all right? And the, the current is in this direction. So we know if a current, if a wire with a current is inside a B field, it will experience a force. Okay, remember that force. I L cross B. Okay, that's the same force that I was just talking about at the beginning, 
right here. Okay, I L cross B. And so that force, in order to find it, uh, you put your um, four fingers along the direction of the current. B is coming out of your hand, your palm, and F is showing you the direction of the magnetic field. Sorry, uh, the direction of the uh, force. So if that's the case, then what I have here is this. I have, oops, my four fingers along the direction of the current, B is coming out of my hand, and then my thumb is showing the direction of F. If you do the same thing for wire one, then what you're gonna see is, uh, is that there, is a, there exists a similar force, but in the opposite direction. So these two wires are repelling one another. For the case of two, when you have uh, the two currents in the same directions, so I1 and I2 are in the same direction, there exists a force towards one another, okay? Or in other words, they attract one another. So uh, if you have two wires in the same current, uh, or I1 and I2, but in the same direction, they will attract, but the currents in the opposite direction, they will repel. So force between two current carrying wire, as I was just talking about. This is actually a better presentation for the directions of the current and forces. So here, I1 and I2 are in the same direction. Okay, uh, magnetic field produced by I2 is out. So this is out and this is in, inward and outward. And so there exists a force uh, that, that acts on the, both of these wires and can attract one another. But these, these two will repel because of the direction. So remember a force on a wire, force on wire with current I, what was it? F is I L cross B. Okay, this is exactly here I L cross B or I L B sine of theta. Sine of theta is the angle between L and B, between L and B. B is either out or in, and L is always in this direction. So there exists a sine of 90, which is always one. So this is always one. Okay, so ILB. And this B is because of the existence of a current inside the other uh, wire. Or in other words, this B is mu zero I1 over two pi R or two pi D, uh, the distance between the two. So if you if rearrange things, then the force that they exert on one another, either attraction or uh, repulsion, it's mu zero I1, I2, two pi D, L, and the D is the distance between them. So this D is the distance between the two wires. So let's take a look at this question. Um, a horizontal wire carrying a current and is in a vertical magnetic field. So this is the magnetic field up and the current is to the right. What is the direction of the force on a wire? So this is a, a piece of cake. Four fingers along the direction of the current. Okay. Four fingers along the direction of the current. B is coming out of your hand or uh, your palm. And then uh, your thumb should be showing the direction of force, which is out of the page. Lecture question number five. Um, all right. So a horizontal wire carries a current and is in a vertical magnetic field. What is the direction of the force on the wire? 
So what was the force? I L cross B, right? Or I L B sine of the angle between L and B. Is there any angle between L and B? They're all in the same direction, aren't they? So that means that this is the sine of zero and sine of zero is zero, which means everything is zero. So there is no uh, force acting on this. So the force is zero. Field and force, uh, two straight wire runs parallel, okay, right there, to each other, each carrying current in the direction shown below. So they both going in the same direction. The two wires experience a force in which direction? I was just talking about this, right? So uh, because of the existence of a magnetic field produced by either of these, so uh, uh, this wire two and wire one, and the, for example, wire one is presented in the magnetic field produced by wire two. So there exists a uh, attraction between them. So they, they, uh, they, it's always towards each other, okay? Current loops. So uh, if, if you have a loop, okay, that means that you have a wire in the form of a circle. The magnetic field of a current loop is similar to the magnetic field of a bar magnet. Okay, so if, if you want to consider that, and it's by the way the same right hand rule, your thumb in the direction of the current, as you can see right here, and the direction of the curling fingers or bending four fingers will be showing you the direction of the magnetic field, okay? And this would be the amount of that, that, that magnetic field, N, which is the number of turns, mu zero I over two R. And R is, by the way, uh, this would be our radius of, of this loop. Solenoids. Solenoids are a um, series of current loops form into the shape of a cylinder, okay? So I have an eye or the current in this direction coming up, but uh, there are a series of loops that you can see, and then the, the current is coming down. In order to find uh, the direction of the B field inside, okay, in order to find the direction of the B field inside, imagine that you have a um, magnet bar inside. What would, be, what would be the direction of that magnet bar? The direction of the magnet bar, south and north, was this. right? That was the direction of this magnet bar, the direction of the B field. This is the exact same for uh, the solenoid, okay? The, and if you want to find the B inside, this is your answer. The B inside is this. And N is the number of turns divided by L. The number of turns divided by the L of this cylinder, or the length of this cylinder. Okay. So if you have a bar magnet, as I just said, N is uh, north and south, S is south, so the B fields are coming out of north and going inside the south, and inside it is in this direction. Okay, so that is your B field. Okay, so imagine that, and then ha imagine uh, your loop. So the loop is put your thumb in the direction of the current, and then your curling finger should show the direction of the uh, magnetic field, which is, in this case, the current is going up. So put your thumb here, put your thumb, thumb here, and then your curling finger should show you the direction of the magnetic field. And if that's the case, then this would be the direction of the magnetic field B. 
okay? And this is, can be represented by a bar magnet, right? So, in other words, if you have um, two loops and they both have the same uh, direction, they will attract because I can represent this loop. I can show that the current in this loop, uh, there exists a magnetic field in this direction, which I can replace it by a bar magnet. And I can show that there exists another bar magnet inside because uh, because of the magnetic field produced by this loop. And so there is, there is a south pole here, and there is a north pole here, and then they will attract. So there is an attraction. And then here, if they are having this different uh, current direction, one is in this direction. Okay. And the other one is in this direction. Then there will be a repulsion between them. So for the solenoid, as I was just saying, uh, there exists a magnetic field, okay? And that magnetic field is B mu zero N over I, and this N is a number of turns per unit length, or N is number of ten, uh, turns over L. So N over L would be little n here, okay? And if you want to think about this, you have, uh, if, if you're looking from this to this solenoid from, uh, you know, um, from top, then you can see that there exists a wire that's, the, they have a wire, uh, current going inside. And then in the opposite direction, there is a wire that bring the current outside. Okay, so this is going in and this is coming out. If that's the case, then each of these little wires Will produce a magnetic field. Just put your finger, your thumb in the direction of the current, and your curling finger should be showing you the direction of the magnetic field. And for the inside, just hold your um, hold uh, the solenoid in your right hand, and your thumb should be showing you the direction of the uh, magnetic field. So one side is S, the other side is north. And so inside there exists a B field right there. So that is the B field. So lecture question number seven, magnetic force on a loop. So there exists a rectangular current loop in a uniform magnetic field B. What is the direction of the net force on this loop? So let's take a deeper look on this. Um, Let's consider each part individually. So for example, on, on this part, uh, put your four fingers along the direction of the current. B is coming out of your hand or palm. Then your thumb is showing you the direction of uh, the force. And on this side, the force is in this direction. Let's consider this, this side, four fingers along the direction of the current. B is coming out of your hand. Then, uh, your, thing, your thumb should show the direction of the force, okay? So which is in this direction. And this is by the way, 90 degrees, okay? This is 90 degrees. And then uh, for this one, four fingers along the direction of the current, B is coming out of your hand, and then your thumb should show the direction of the force, which is F. With the, with the same uh, right hand rule, I have force here in this side, and they will all cancel out. So there, there exists no net force. That means the net force is zero. Amper's law for a static magnetic field. So if, if we have a static magnetic field, and this is probably a little bit confusing at first, but that's okay, trust me. Uh, that's how it is when it comes to Amper's law. Uh, if you consider that the, there exists a magnetic field around a wire carrying uh, current I, and then we know that this current um, causes an existence of a magnetic field that can change by uh, how far you're away or close to the wire. So for example, if I have a wire 
carrying current I, the magnetic field around this wire depends on how close or far from this wire I am. In other words, it depends of uh, depends on uh, this R. It depends on this R or the radius of the circle. If you're really far away, if you're here, then this R is huge, then your B is less. So B is mu zero I over two pi R. Okay, I talked about it in the previous couple of slides. If you go back, uh, that the existence of a magnetic field around a wire carrying current I. But if you're looking at this, um, the only factor here is I and R. If I is constant, then the only thing that can change is R. And if, if you go to each little pieces of these uh, uh, concentric circles, because for another R, we would have another circle. Um, let's say that this is another R or R prime, for example, okay? R prime. So for each of these little parts, uh, each of these little delta Ls, okay? If I sum over the B field uh, in the, each of these little concentric parts of these circles, then I am having a sigma of B delta L, okay? Parallel because, because of that, okay? Because the B field is in this direction, and so your delta is also your delta is also in the same direction, is mu zero permeability of the free space, times I, which is the current inside this, um, you know, inside this this wire. Now, if you want to drive that, then if B is constant, which is for a particular R, you can bring this out of the summation. And then you have the sum of delta L, this, this is delta L, equals to mu zero I. And some of the delta L is that you sum of this, sum of that, plus this, plus this, which is the circumference of the uh, circle. And if that's the case, then it is two pi R. So that's why B sigma of delta L, which is two pi R equals mu zero I, or B is mu zero over two pi R, okay? It has another form. It has another form of integral. So this is the summation. It has a form of inter integral or integration, which is the closed path of B dot DL is mu zero I plus a correction form. Correction. I'm not going to talk about this correction uh, because it is it will be out of this uh, the, the scope of this uh, course. I'm not going to talk about this yet, uh, but this would be the Ampere's law. B dot DL in a closed path around the wire would be equal to mu zero I, okay? So if you do that for a wire carrying current, a long wire, wire carrying current, then at distance R, this would be your magnetic field. So let's take a look at this. If a current in these wires have the same magnitude but opposite directions, so one is coming in, one is going inside, so this is in and this is out, okay? Then, but the, in the opposite directions, we know that. What is the direction of the magnetic field at point P? At point P, so again, you have a wire carrying current I. In order to find the direction of the magnetic field here, we know what the magnitude of that is, mu zero I over two pi R. In order to find the direction, the direction is done by right hand rule. Put your thumb in the direction of the current. Your four fingers are curling in one direction, right? And in the particular direction, and that direction is the B field. Okay, so here, for example, in our case, put your thumb in the direction of magnetic uh, direction of the current, then your fingers are 
curling. Sorry for my bad handwriting. This is terrible. Um, then your four fingers are curling or curving in one direction. And that would be the direction of the magnetic field at this point. Okay. So for, for this one, put your four fingers inside, bend your fingers to this point P. Okay. So this would be the direction of the magnetic field causing by this wire. And for the other wire, put your four fingers out. Okay. And then um, you, uh, sorry, put your um, thumb in the direction of the uh, wire. Okay. In the direction of the current and your four fingers are curling in uh, towards the point P, okay? If that's the case, then you will have another uh, magnetic field in this direction. Okay, so it would be in the direction of uh, down because both of them are in the same direction so it will go down so one two three four i think it would be considered three because three is down whatever the downward is direction okay magnetism in matters so remember moving charge creating a magnetic field this is very, very important. Okay, so the electrons surrounding uh, in atoms are moving and thus creating a magnetic field. Okay, so if I have a, if I consider that these are the protons or the nucleus, okay, and so these particles or the electrons are moving around, so these are electrons, right? Charged particles that are moving around. We don't exactly know their location, we can just guess. Um, but we know that they, they, uh, they move around. So, uh, so they exist a, uh, a magnetic field, but these magnetic fields are randomly in random directions. So for a particle or for, a subject, uh, for, a, for, for an object, uh, the, there is no net uh, magnetic field or the net magnetic field is really, really weak. But uh, in some atoms, there is a net magnetic field. If the atoms have a strong tendency to align with each other, okay? If atoms have a strong tendency to align with each other, creating a net magnetic field, the material is called ferromagnets. This is very important. So if I ask you what the ferromagnets is, you should be able to explain if there exists a tendency along these particles inside a, a uh, object that they want to align with one another, then that material is called ferromagnet. Okay. Domains and ferromagnets. So ferromagnets are characterized by domains. So uh, for example, this is one of these domains, all right? So in other words, they are and they're having a randomly uh, directed uh, magnetic field, okay? And uh, there is no net magnetic field for, the, for this object. If they present in, ex if we put them in an external magnetic field, if I put this object in the external magnetic field B, then the, most of these areas, these cells, these domains will align uh, in the direction of the magnetic field. So if you're looking at this, most of these are somehow directed aligned the direction of this magnetic field. Not all of them, but most of them. So most of them, okay? Most of them will be aligned the direction of this magnetic field. So uh, this will create a magnetic field inside, within the material or inside the material. So type of magnets, we have uh, permanent magnets are 
ferromagnets, such as materials, can preserve a memory of magnetic field that are presented when the material cooled or is formed. Okay, so these are permanent magnets, and they are ferromagnets that they have a memory when they cooled down or when they formed. Paramagnets materials um, partially align in a strong magnetic field outside, but the alignment disappear when the outside field is gone, so they are called paramagnets. That means the para means that once you remove the external field, then your magnetic field will also disappear quickly. But all the other materials, if they're not paramagnets or ferromagnets, they are called diamagnets, okay? If they are not paramagnets or ferromagnets, they are diamagnets. And when placed in an external magnetic field, they develop a small magnetic field in the opposite direction. So they tend to lower the, uh, if you have external magnetic field outside, then the magnetic field will be in the opposite direction. So let's uh, go over uh, chapter 22 one more time. All magnets have two poles, north and south. Magnetic fields can be visualized using magnetic fields lines. Okay, so we use lines to visualize them. And these lines point away from North Pole and towards the South Pole. So in other words, uh, if you have North and South, if it is a magnet, then outside it will look like this, inside it will look like that. Okay, the Earth produces its own magnetic field. It is a shield of protection for us. Uh, the, the, one of the reasons that we have life on Earth is because we have a strong magnetic field, okay? The magnetic field exert a force on an electron or a charged particle, not necessarily an electron, that is moving in, in, inside the magnetic field and that force is given by this equation. So if I want to show this equation, the correct format of this equation, this is also correct is Q, V cross B, okay? And the right-hand rule gives you the direction of the magnetic field. Put your four fingers along the direction of the velocity. B is coming out of your uh, hand or your palm, and then your thumb will show you the direction of the force, okay? If a charged particle is moving parallel to the magnetic field and experience no magnetic force, because parallel means sine of zero, okay, is zero. If a charged particle is moving perpendicular to the magnetic field, it moves in a circular motion, okay, because there exists a force with an angle of 90 degrees with respect to the velocity. So that means that this would be the trajectory. And it is happening at each point, so that means that you have a circular type of motion, okay? So this is the force, this is the velocity. Here, this is the velocity, this is the force. Here, this is the force, this is the velocity. Velocity, force. And we know that that force, since it is a circular type of motion, is, is m v squared over r. And r is the radius of the circle. If a charged particle is moving at the angle to the magnetic field, it moves in a, a helix. So uh, only it does a circular motion if it's in, uh, perpendicular to the magnetic field. So a wire carrying an electric current also may experience a force uh, in a magnetic field, and that force is coming from this uh, formula. That force is I, L cross B, okay, or I, L, B, sine of theta. And theta is the angle between B and L. A current loop, so we're talking about loop now, 
okay? And the magnetic field may experience a torque, and that torque is NIAB sine theta. I explicitly drive this equation. So if you don't remember, please go ahead and probably watch the, the first few uh, minutes of this, uh, this video, okay? And electric current creates a magnetic field around it. If you have a wire carrying a current I, it will create a magnetic field at point R. Okay, and that at that point R, there exists a magnetic field B. Um, and that is coming from Ampere's law, okay? The integral or the sigma B delta L equals permeability of free space mu zero times I, which is enclosed. So in other words, if I wanna show it, this would be that circle. Okay, and the two pi r is the circumference of that uh, circle. And the force between the current carrying wire, okay, so let's say that this is I1, and this is wire one, and this is I2, this is wire two, and then this would be the force because force is I1L uh, B, and this B is mu zero I2, two pi R, and the R is the distance between them. So R is D between the two. The magnetic field of a current loop is similar to that of a bar magnet. We know that. In order to find it, we use a right-hand rule, thumb in the direction of the current, your four fingers curling in some the direction that would be the direction of the magnetic field and the field at the center of the loop is um, so if you have many of these and is a number of turns then it is n mu i i over 2r at the center so b at the center is n mu zero i over two r and r by the way is radius for the solenoid what we have um what was solenoid solenoid was a uh, cylinder type of you know a cylinder type for the solenoid at the center of the solenoid we have b mu zero n i and mu zero was the permeability of a free space n is the number of turns per unit length or n over l um, so n is n over l and then i is the current inside this loop a paramagnetic material has no magnetic field but will develop a so a power magnet will develop a small magnetic field in the direction of the um, you know, applied field or external field. A ferromagnet material may have a permanent magnetic field, may have a permanent magnetic field, okay? Uh, when placed in the applied field, uh, it develops permanent magnetism. All other materials have a small diamagnet effect, all the materials when placed in the external magnetic field, they develop a small magnetic field opposite. It's extremely important, opposite to the applied field or to the external field. Okay, this is the end of uh, chapter 22. So let me know if you have any questions. Um, you know, comment below if you, um, if you have any questions or email me, uh, I'll talk to you guys soon.